Hi everybody, um, my name is Mary Ward. I did introduce myself in the other video that I'm making for the lectures, but um, I'm actually an assistant professor of graphic design at MSU Northern. I have a pretty extensive background in the visual arts, mostly focused on graphic design, so using the computer to make art. But uh, with this course, I'm really excited to kind of teach you guys a little bit about the basics of art and just how to appreciate it a little bit more. So let's go over the spring syllabus, the 2021 spring syllabus. Um, at the top, you can see my phone number. So if you want to text me, please do, but just make sure you include your name uh, in the text so that I know who's texting me and from what class. Most of my classes are pretty small, but this one's going to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to need your name if you text me, which is fine. Text me because that's the best way to get a hold of me. Or you can email me at my MSUN or within Brightspace. Those are going to, but texting is going to be the fastest. So if you have some sort of, you know, important thing that you really need to have me get back to you on, that's a good one to get me on, you know, on my text, text message is the best. So, um, but the other, the other two work as well. So Global Visual Culture, Art History 160 is a journey into the concepts, techniques, media, terms, principles, elements used by artists of today and of the past. Um, we'll be discussing art from around the world to better understand how art shapes culture. And you should expect to learn the processes, the techniques, the media used by artists. And we should be able to critique historical and modern works of art and identify and discuss the geographical and historical context of these works, at least at a basic level by the end of this course. And hopefully you'll be able to identify elements and principles of art used in um, a piece that you might see in a museum. You can walk up to it and say, hey, these elements and principles are present in this piece. And you'll be able to actually describe the piece um, in a way that is in an educated way, basically. Um, so with the skills learned from this course, students should be able to critique, understand, and appreciate art from different historical time periods and geographical locations, and also modern art as well, contemporary art. Course materials might not be a bad idea to have a notebook um, just to take notes with, if, especially if you decide to watch the video lectures. Those should be available most weeks for most of the chapters. There might be a few that don't have a video lecture but the majority of them will have a video lecture that really goes over the chapter in quite a bit of detail. Um, so it might be useful to you to have a notebook to take notes with. Um, and obviously the book, we definitely need the book. Um, either the you know paperback version or the e-version will work well for this course. I tend to like paperback just because I like to have my computer screen for working on my actual like homework and stuff and then um you know i guess if you have an e-version you can look at it on your phone as well so you, if you have two screens available to do your work on then you can also get the e-version but the isbn number for the for the print book is here um, and then there's a rental paperback available at the msun bookstore so go check that out um, if you purchase online, that's fine. Just make sure that you get the right book, obviously. It's got to be the 12th edition um, by Preble's Art Forms 12th edition. So if you end up getting the 11th edition, um, I don't really necessarily recommend it because I know that they might be, it might be confusing for you to use a different edition, but if you are willing to put up with that um, inconvenience, that's up to you to decide to do. So grades are based on the following. We have quizzes, which are made up of 30% of your grade. So one third of your grade is quizzes. Um, there's 20 question quizzes every week on the chapter reading. And we do one chapter a week. We try to really kind of do a little bit of a deep dive into the chapter. And you know, by the end of um, 15 weeks, we get through th 15 chapters and that's a pretty good chunk of that book. So um, the rest of your grade, a large chunk of your grade, will be exercises, assignments, discussions, and mini projects. So basically, all the other assignments besides the quizzes are going to be worth 40% of your grade. And then we have some three um, larger projects for the course that are worth 10% of your grade. So at some point, you know, during the first 
third of the class, uh, I want you to visit a museum or an artist studio. That's worth 10% of your grade. Um, I will have the information on that project. Um, I'll have a project worksheet for that that details that project. Um, and that's going to be due at the end of week six. So that's a ways out, but don't let that creep up on you. Don't leave this till last minute because this is kind of a big deal. You have to literally go to a location, take photos, take video, um, and put together a little bit of a presentation. So it's going to be a time consuming project. That's why you get six weeks. So you want to get started on it as soon as you can. Uh, probably within the week two would be a good time to start planning and getting it together and really going for it because it's worth 10% of your grade. Um, and then the public art project is worth 10% as well. And that's due at the end of week 11 here. Um, and then research and artists from history project that will be due at the end of um, week 15, which is the last week. So that's something that you're going to want to get started with right away after probably in week 13 or 12, sorry, week 12. So just remember that these are sort of things that you have to be disciplined about because they make up 30% of your grade as a whole and 10% each. So here's the weekly schedule. Basically, we just do a chapter a week. We do end up skipping chapter two um, to kind of launch into some of the other things that I wanted to go over. And then we, at the end, do end up um, skipping to chapter 20 here from 15 to 20. So we do skip around a little bit um, in the book, but basically it's a chapter a week, usually, you know, around 15 pages and then a 20 question quiz every week, plus smaller assignments on top of that. Um, so just be checking the weekly modules for what's expected of you that week. So here's the letter grades, they're pretty basic. Obviously, you guys, if you get a D, those are not passing grades. So, you know, don't get a D. Student responsibilities. These are important. You need to check Brightspace daily, read the announcements, uh, read through the tasks outlined in the weekly modules. So we have week one through week 15. So each week, go in, check and see what you need to be doing that week. There should be a list of things that you need to do that week and get turned in that week. And Typically, the due dates are always going to be Sunday nights at, by 11.30 p.m. So anytime during the week, you can turn it in, but the due date will be by the end of the week on Sunday at 11.30 p.m. at night. Um, so just make sure you're checking those weekly modules every week. You know, check Brightspace daily um, for any announcements and just stay on top of it. Check in every day. Look through that week. Um, Make sure you're meeting the assignment requirements. Um, so also, every week, you know, you're going to need to complete chapter readings. You're going to have to take your quiz every week by Sunday at 11.30 p.m. or by 11.30 p.m. And then complete those additional assignments. Uh, remember that you have those three major projects for the class outlined above. I will be, you know, posting reminders. I will put the project worksheets in there for you to read over. I will be available to add, you know, answer any questions you have about them as well. Do not fall behind because it can be extremely difficult to catch up once you have fallen behind because we're just going to keep moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. So if one week you fall behind, it's going to be really hard to make up that work because we're continuing to move forward throughout the whole uh, semester. So it just it's hard to catch up once you have fallen behind. So it's best to just stay on top of it and keep up as best you can. Um, throughout the semester. Um, also, read reading the book and take and completing the quizzes alone is worth thirty percent. So take that re take reading seriously. I'm also going to be providing uh, lecture videos for you to watch, and they'll help reinforce the reading and will serve as an alternative to reading. But reading will still be required once um, since I don't cover cover everything in the chapter in the lectures. I cover the main points of the chapter in the lecture, but I don't necessarily cover every single piece of art in the chapter, but the quiz is due. So you're going to have to read. And then if you really want to reinforce the chapter reading, uh, take those. Um, it's totally a good idea to watch the 
chapter um, video lectures as well. And also remember, it's your responsibility to ask questions if you're confused on anything. Um, emailing me, texting me works well. You can join me via WebEx during weekly office hours. I'm going to have those posted eventually. And these weekly office hours are designed to allow you to actually check in and ask me questions. Um, so that will be helpful, hopefully, to you guys. Late assignments are accepted, but they do get cut down a letter grade for being tardy. And then every week that passes, the letter grade will drop. So uh, just remember, it becomes very confusing and inconvenient for me to grade late assignments, especially if everyone is late with their work. And it's nice when I go to grade an assignment and everything is there and I don't have to go around trying to track different people down for their work. So just remember, it's super convenient for me if you can get your work on on time. Uh, online office hours. So no attendance is obviously required for this course. It's an online course. I will be establishing some WebEx office hours in the week. Uh, I'm going to send out an announcement probably the, the first week of class with a survey in it, and that will ask you kind of what time works best for you, and you can fill out the survey on what times work best, and then that is what I'm going to kind of establish my weekly office hours on. And you can always request a special WebEx meeting with me if you need to, and we can meet outside of the office hours. You just need to shoot me an email or a text, and we can set up a WebEx meeting whenever you need it. And then the academic integrity and misconduct. I don't typically go over these, um, but there's a accessibility statement there for those with special needs, uh, tutoring central information so they can help with writing math or computer help. Uh, and then Brightspace Technical Support. This is a great uh, resource for you. They are in Cowan Hall 110C, and there's the number there. Jason Gear, also Lindsay Bennett, is helpful with that. So they are a great place. It's the Office of Learning Excellence, I believe, Learning Technology and Excellence uh, on the MSU Northern Campus within Cowan Hall, first floor. And they are super helpful if you have any problems with Brightspace. And then I also wanted to um, show you a little trick in Brightspace. So go up here once you're logged into the course. The course home is here. So this is the announcements, the re required book. I have a screenshot of the cover and the ISBN for the rent for the paperback. But there's also they're they're available at the MSU Northern Bookstore. Um, some so up upcoming you know due dates, availability dates will be over here. So announcements is a pretty important area to check, but the really important part, part is content area. So week one, week two, they're hidden right now, but week three through week 15, basically, of this course. Are, so check in here every week. But the one thing you should think about doing is going into your um, notifications area underneath your profile and adding in your phone number. Put your phone number in there and turn on all of these SMS notifications so that you get notifications on when I release grades, when I add to the content, when I do any kind of assignment or announcement. At least put the annou announcements on, but definitely it's not a bad idea to just get information on all of this directly text message to your phone so that you're not uh, missing anything. Um, it's just a helpful thing, reminder for you uh, to get it on your phone um, if I make changes within uh, Brightspace. And that's about it for now. I uh, look forward to working with you guys this semester.